Hey there, and welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your brain's player too. There are a lot of games out there, and they fall into many categories. Racing, first-person shooter, RPG, JRPG, fighting, you name it. Which of course means at some point in history, some brave hero looked out across the gaming landscape and saw that there was a need for a game about checking documents. And lo, they called it Papers, Please. For those of you who don't fall spontaneously unconscious at the idea of playing a game about rubber stamping immigrants all day, you should know that Papers, Please is an incredible achievement, both in terms of its gameplay and in the way it teaches empathy. In Papers, Please, you are a border security agent tasked with keeping your country safe. That's the directive anyway, but like real life, things are a lot more complicated than that. You'll scour the paperwork of refugees and others looking to enter the fictional nation of Arstotska, sometimes interrogating them or even doing full body searches to confirm that they are who they say they are, let too many quote-unquote undesirables through, and your pay takes a hit, which directly impacts your ability to feed your own family. If you can't keep them fed and warm, say goodbye to beloved son and uncle. But the stories of the immigrants might make you inclined to bend the rules. A wife wants only to join her family in Arstotska. Are you really going to turn her away just because all her papers aren't in order? Would you keep a family divided because of what could simply be a clerical error, even though letting her in will directly and negatively impact your own family? It's this sort of moral ambiguity that makes Papers, Please fantastic. Border security has been a hot topic lately, so we were wondering, what's it actually like to try and keep a border secure? If you're going to travel anywhere outside your home country, you'll need a passport. This is basically a certificate from your home country saying that you are who you say you are. But that's the bare minimum. Depending on where you go and what you want to do, it can get a lot more complicated. If you're a citizen from another country and you want to move to the US, you're in for a bit of a slog. Aside from a passport, you'll need a visa. No, not the credit card, although I guess you can't really be an American without one. I'm talking about a document from the country you want to go to granting you permission to travel there. So a passport is from your country and a visa is from where you're going. If you're only coming temporarily as a student or for your employer, you'd receive a temporary visa. But if you're looking to immigrate, you'll need to make sure your application for a permanent resident visa is completed. At the border, you'll have an interview with a customs officer who will review your information and make the determination as to whether or not you're allowed to enter. So in a way, customs officers are like the bouncers of Club America. Only, they probably won't let you in just because you're bringing some hotties with you, even on ladies' night. Contrary to popular belief, a customs officer is not an official responsible for making sure you celebrate the 4th of July or avoid wearing sandals with socks. They're law enforcement officers charged with keeping the borders secure from both illegal contraband, such as drugs and weapons, as well as from people who might be trying to cross the border into the country illegally. They're not bound by the same restrictions that regular police officers are, so it's easier for them to search your belongings or detain you. Each day in our country, they process more than 1 million people, and they handle 12,000 pounds of narcotics. They're also responsible for upholding the rules of around 40 different agencies, and you thought keeping track of everything you had to check in Papers, Please was tricky. And sure, America's bigger than Arstotska, but you can imagine it's also better staff, so most likely you and your fellow make-believe Arstotskan customs officers are just as overworked and stressed as the real thing. Just like in the game, unscrupulous people try all sorts of tricks to sneak into the country, such as lying about criminal history, lying about their reasons for wanting to enter the country, or giving agents fake documents. They can accomplish this in a variety of ways, such as by bribing officials in their home country or purchasing stolen passports on the black market. It's crazy to think about how how many ways a border agent's job can go wrong. At least in the US, border checkpoints like the one you operate in Papers, Please are considered the third layer in our protective strategy. The other two, line watching and roving patrol along the border, aim to catch people who may have slipped through the cracks. Along with manned patrols and some barriers, Border Patrol has started using drones and stationary sensor arrays to keep an eye on things. In fact, these sorts of patrols don't just happen right along the border. The government has designated 100 miles around the border as the border zone, and that includes the coast. Considering about 200 million Americans live within 100 miles of a border, that's a lot of potential people who could be stopped and asked for their papers, please. All of this stuff is incredibly important to people trying to start a new life in a new country, but I'm gonna be honest with you, the nuts and bolts of it are eye-wateringly boring. We're talking mountains of paperwork and data. It's actually a testament to the creative developer Lucas Pope that he was able to make a compelling and moving game out of this subject. In the game, it's your job to find discrepancies between the documents given 
given to you by travelers and the people themselves, as well as the rules you're required to abide by. You start out with some nice government-sanctioned training wheels, in that you're not allowed to let in anyone who isn't an Arstotskan citizen. Pretty soon, though, the borders open up significantly, and any mistake you make could lead to death and destruction in your country. This guy's claiming he's a citizen, but he's clearly a different guy than his passport photo. You can't just assume plastic surgery and give him a pass. Lives are at stake here. U.S. Customs officials, of course, vigorously check the paperwork you provide as a traveler, but they also develop what some of them think of as a sixth sense. That shifty-eyed guy whose passport seems to be in order on the first glance? You know, the one you just don't have a good feeling about? Customs officials work hard to hone that sense in order to prevent well-prepared bad guys from doing us harm. And if you play Papers, Please for long enough, you can just feel when you're gonna get a citation for letting in an undesirable. Of course, the consequences for messing up the real thing are a lot higher. They're not just sending imaginary children to bed without supper. Sorry, son. Hey, thanks for watching. This was a bit of a departure for us, seeing as how we focused less on science and more of a specific sociopolitical issue. So let us know what you think. Are you in favor of us expanding beyond the world of science and into other cool and interesting facts behind video games? I mean, of course, we'll never abandon science. I love you, science. I promise you'll still get your fill of that. If you have any ideas for games to cover, leave it in the comments below. Like and subscribe, and don't forget to keep on playing. For the glory of Astotska!